So my name is Leanne and I am the Student Engagement and Communications Assistant at UHI. And my name is Inna, I'm a PhD student at the Scalaway campus of uh, the Shetland UHI. And my PhD is about the siting of marine renewable energy developments at sea and how that's uh, planned. Hello, my name is Claire Davenport. I used to be a fine arts student and I used to write environmental news as a reporter. So for Student Empowerment Day on Green Week 2021, we thought it would be a good idea to catch up with the Shetland Students Green Team to find out what kind of things they get up to and any tips that you guys have for students who want to do something similar. First things first, what is the Shetland Students Green Team and who's it for? Uh, so the Shetland Students Green Team is a HISA student society and it was the first society to be set up between the Shetland campuses and it was in response to a call by Leanne in the student newsletter to see uh, if there's any students or staff uh, interested to set up a working group around sustainability. So that's how we got together. We work together to raise awareness of environment and sustainability issues. And it's for students and staff, but our events are for the whole community because unlike other universities, there's not really a distinct student body in, in Shetland. That's why it's nice to just um, organize events for everybody, not just uh, UHI. Claire, I think you joined right at the beginning as well. Claire, what made you decide to join the, the Shetland Students Green Team? Why were you interested? Well, I have always been interested in communicating to the public about environmental matters. So when Inna and myself met and realised we kind of had the same ideas, uh, she asked me to join the Green Team and I was really happy to. And Inna, what about you? Um, so uh, I was also just new in Shetland uh, uh, when, when I saw that ad from the end. So it just seemed like a great way to also just meet other people interested in the same topics and environmental issues. And indeed, it has been a really great way to just meet, uh, for example, Ian and Claire and so many other people and to just organize things together, because that's how you kind of get to know each other as well. Also, before coming here, I was also in the in the green team in high school and stuff. So it really appealed to me. Yeah. And that's like one of the nice things about student societies as well. Like you've all you all have a shared interest and you get to meet people and you guys met at the green team, didn't you? Or just just before? Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, it was just through uh, inviting Claire to join us that we kind of got to know each other and became friends. As Shetland Students Green Team, what kind of events do you get involved in? The most frequent events that we've been organising are beach cleans, um, which because they're quite easy to organise and it's also quite accessible for people who don't know anybody else to just come and join us. In the, in the first year that we were a society, uh, somebody that used to be par part of the Green Team, she could organize um, gloves for us. And this is something that you can even buy with your startup money if you want to set up a stu student society. And just, you can wash them and use them every day and just bring them for everybody who comes along so that uh, the people who come along, the volunteers don't have to bring their own gloves. Um, and it was also a nice uh, way to start seeing each other again in real life from April onwards, you know, like as a nice transition of, OK, we can uh, already meet up outside. So a beach clean just seemed like an accessible event to organize um, and also a great way yeah, to meet new people and have some snacks and, and drink hot drinks together. Um, and then we also during lockdown try to um, keep events going, um, but then more online events. So, for example, we organized transport talks, which was with the local transport officer here in Shetland, so we could communicate what are some of the issues we have with getting to the campuses without a car? Um, and also what ideas we had of how the, uh, active travel could become more accessible. And these ideas were then taken up by the transport officer. We also did some recycling actions. For example, we organized um, a collection of stationery on both campuses, which I then took to Edinburgh, where there is a, a facility where you could um, put those pens so that you know that they would be recycled. We organized an online quiz we organized, um, instead of an Amazon voucher, a voucher to the local zero waste shop here, because even here in Shetland, there is a zero waste shop. Nice way to not make the money go to Amazon, but to local shops that already have like um, really good initiatives. We tried to put together um, information packs for students to debunk some of the kind of the more technical information that's out there and that's perhaps not as accessible to students and to the public. So that they have a better grasp on um, how, for example, recycling works, 
what can and can't be recycled. And so it's really important that, you know, when they're disposing of their waste, that they have some confidence of where it's ending up. And also that when they're doing their shopping, they have more confidence on knowing, you know, how long are the supply chains? Um, are these actually sustainable products? That kind of information. Yeah, you guys have done a, a lot of really great things. I remember coming to one of the first beach cleans and it was a beautiful day in Scalloway and it was so nice to meet everybody. And I remember from a distance, it looked like it was a clean beach. And then when we were actually cleaning it, the amount of netting and all the kind of stuff we found that was so small, it I couldn't believe it. But also it was nice to nice to have a community event and have some hot chocolate and get to know each other so you guys have done a great job of organizing the beach cleans and you also share and communicate a lot of information through your facebook page don't you one of the ways that we want to share resources are also just relevant news items um and what uh, claire and sarah also for example did is uh, go around to all of the um, uh, cafes and see where you can get a discount if you have a reusable cup so then we were also able to share that. Was it the Heiser Explorer that you were involved in as well? You helped them with the, the what to involve in their packs for going out looking at nature and things like that too. And I think one of the members of the Green Team wrote a few articles for our website on the connections between well-being and nature as well. So that was another great thing that you guys did too. Another event that I remembered that you organised in it for World Earth Day along with Haiza and the university was a talk from our local Transition Turneyfield. Could you tell us a bit about that? Yes, so Transition Turneyfield is um, based in the in the west side of Shetland and they are an organic farm but they do also a lot of uh, outreach and education to the community, for example teaching people how to grow their own and that's why we invited them. So we had an online workshop where um, Transition Turfield explained a bit who they were. And then for about half an hour, students and staff had the chance to reach out and ask questions about how they can start growing their own as well. For example, what kind of compost and um, what's accessible for even when you don't have a garden. Uh, so that was a nice way to, to share, like, um, share their project across UHI, because even though not all of the campuses of UHI have the same climate as Shetland, I guess we're all kind of in the highlands and islands with similar challenges. Do you have any top tips on how students at other campuses can set up something similar at their campus? The way that Leanne posted ads on the student newsletter, for example, was a really effective way to reach out to students and staff who would be keen to get involved. And then just find a moment of the week that works best for everybody to have regular meetings face to face so that you don't always have to try and find a time that works for everybody. It's really great to create relationships with your community by joining up with like minded initiatives. Like there are um, other uh, informal green talks, but also formally there are local organizations who have the same goals, such as reducing waste and raising awareness. We uh, try to link up with those groups and also distribute information about what they're doing and organize events. And that way you, you essentially are building up a kind of like green civil society, which is really important. Yeah, and for example, our first beach clean was also together with the Amenity Trust. Um, and there's also a volunteering group organized by RSPB. And then we just share each other's events and then attend each other's events because, yeah, it doesn't just have to be UHI. And um, what we also um, found out through working together is that it really helped to find out what each other's strengths are. So, for example, Claire is an artist, so she was really good at uh, bringing, putting together material in an accessible way, like, for example, via pamphlets, or she even did like a short exhibition about um, raising awareness about plastic pollution issues. And then, for example, Rhiannon, she's very good at writing, so she helped out with the Nature Explorer project. Um, yeah, as Leanne said, making connections between mental health and nature, and also um, writing blog posts and the uh, content for our um, Facebook page. You just have like a, a synergy as a team if you just each have your own strengths. And yeah, I guess also the important, most important top tip is just to have fun and enjoy and like explore new areas in your uh, where you live and meet new people. And don't forget about your own strength in it, which um, definitely organization. I think you've been um, managing to organise lots of things, even through lockdown and the beach cleans before and after. So well done to you as well. 
I was just about to say the same thing, Leanne. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> without without in it, uh, honestly, this green team would never have happened. Really amazing. And it's amazing what people do in other places. And I also wanted to come in there with a tip that's connected to that, uh, which is, yeah, yes, have fun. And yes, you know, work hard if you believe in it. But it's also really important to do some self-care because there is a lot of eco grief at the moment. Uh, you know, people might not get as far as they want to. Um, change might not happen quickly or it might not happen at all. And so it's really important to also take breaks and to, um, yeah, to look after yourself. What I also learned through the green team is that you just need to create win-win situations, you know, where you're doing something for the environment, but also getting something out of it for yourself, like in terms of mental health. Um, so like, for example, with the beach cleans, that is just a nice combination of being in a nice environment. And OK, it was a bit depressing, all of the plastic, but you meet new people, you get an excuse to go outside. On the information aspect, I think a lot of people struggle to um, first of all, there's a huge amount of information and they struggle to know which resources to use and what it all means in particular when it comes to waste and knowing where waste is disposed, etc. Um, and so on a like on a on a global scale, I'd recommend reading The Guardian and reading George Monbiot. Um, but also on a on a smaller scale, um, it's good to try and link up with local councils and to try and get that information from them as well, which is also something that I did. Thank you, Claire. And I was going to ask you what's happening next, but I think the next thing on the calendar is a beach clean for Green Week uh, this this year in 2021. And I'd also like to say congratulations to the Shelton Students Green Team. In their first year in 2019, they won the Heiser Society of the Year and were highly commended in 2021 in the same awards. So well done, you guys. And like Claire said, it wouldn't happen without well, both of you and the, and the rest of the students as well. So. Thank you very much. Thank you.